Dune Part 2 is coming to theaters this November, and the first trailer that was dropped was absolutely epic. Honestly, we could be looking at the next best adapted franchise of all time here. But it's hard to imagine how you go about putting the second half of the novel on screen, and so today I want to talk about what we can expect to see from this movie. Let's dive in. What's up everyone and welcome back to Jones Vibes. And today I'm talking about Dune Part 2, breaking down the trailer and also talking about what we can expect to see as well as some of the things I'm hoping to see. But give this video a like if you're a fan of Dune Part 1. I certainly am. Part 1 made me an instant fan and Denis Villeneuve is an absolute genius. Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, he really is one of the world's top directors right now. And then with Greg Frazier as your DP and Hans Zimmer with the score, you just can't go wrong. I mean, they both won the Oscar. So, but to start things off, I'm curious who's read the novel by Frank Herbert. After seeing the trailer for part two, I decided that I was finally going to, and I just finished it. And holy shit, guys, that book is incredible. I'm going to try and avoid any major spoilers during this video, but if you're worried about just some of the small stuff, here's your warning. But yeah, honestly, before Dune part one came out, I didn't know much about this story at all. But then part one was announced, and when I saw it, it, it just blew me away. The cast was an absolute knockout. Timothy Shaw. Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Dave Bautista, Oscar Isaac, and it was just a really unique cinematic story that I didn't know how much I needed. And now we're already almost to part two, and it's all but confirmed that after part two, Denis is going to be making a third part. And if that's done, I'd imagine it's most likely going to be adapting the second book in the series, Dune Messiah, which I'm actually just starting. But we might have a trilogy on our hands, folks, and that has me very excited. It almost feels reminiscent of The Lord of the Rings. When Peter Jackson's trilogy first came out, I'm not lying when I say that it changed my life. That trilogy had a very formative effect on my creative outlook of the world, and the aesthetic of this just simply feels similar. The epic scope of this mixed with the beautiful quality of things is a breath of fresh air. But let's talk about what we can expect from part two, and let's break this up a little bit, shall we? So first, let's talk about Paul and Jessica. Well, where did we leave them? If you remember, they just met Stilgar, played by Javier Bardem, Chani, played by Zendaya, and a group of Fremen. Paul then has that awesome duel with Jameis and kills him, proving to everyone that he is different and can hold his own. And also, it's revealed that Lady Jessica is pregnant. And now they're off into the desert to join the Fremen and remain under the radar from the Emperor and the Harkonnens. And now, the book has a few big time jumps. There's not much in the first half, but the second half certainly has some. So I'm curious how they're going to handle this. Paul grows a bit older. Not much, but a bit. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but if you've seen part one, you can kind of see where things might be heading. When House Atreides arrives on Arrakis, there are people yelling at Paul, calling him the Lisan El Gaib, the prophet or the messiah. And so that mixed with Paul's vision show that he is destined for something. Could he be a savior? Is he truly the Lisan El Gaib? That's something you'll have to find out. But if his duel with Jameis or his random knowledge of a still suit, even though he's never worn one, is any indication, he's on a path now. And part two is gonna show that path. Jessica, is very much on her own. She's there to support her son, but she lost Leto. She wasn't his wife, but she was his concubine, and she loved him. And so I think if you can expect anything, it's for her to play an even bigger role in the second movie. She's a very important element to all of this, and so is Chani. She was finally introduced at the end of part one, and you know, Zendaya was a huge draw for the marketing, but this time around, you're not just gonna see her for a moment. Paul has been dreaming of this Fremen girl, so she must be important. And as they venture into the desert, there will be tests, there will be adventure, and there will be revelations. The sandworms are out there as well, and from the trailer, we can even see Paul Atreides going for his first ride. Like, that's gonna be so epic. But there is someone else out there on their side whose fate was left up in the air. You know, we saw Paul's protector, Duncan Idaho, sacrifice himself at the end of part one, but we never saw what happened to Gurney Halleck, Josh Brolin's character, and I'm guessing that he's still out there. And so that's definitely something to think about. But on the other side of things, we have House Harkonnen, the bad guys. You have the Baron, Vladimir Harkonnen, Stellan Skarsgård, and he just got away with his life after Leto kind of sacrificed himself to kill everybody in that room. But he also thinks that he succeeded in killing off House Atreides. So it's kind of one of those things where the audience knows something that he doesn't know. And I'm just really excited to see the Harkonnens explored more. And there's also a massive character that hasn't even been introduced yet, Fade Rautha, the Baron. 
Baron's nephew, a master of swords and the heir to the Baron's throne. And I'll tell you what, seeing that Austin Butler is playing him and then seeing how he looked in the trailer got me absolutely hyped. If you're unfamiliar with Fade, he plays a big role in this story and so we can expect some awesome scenes with him. It honestly looks like they decided to shoot some of the Harkonnen scenes in black and white as well. And if that's the case, Wow. But then we have the Emperor and Princess Irulan. Obviously, the Emperor is the end all. He holds the power. We didn't see him in the trailer, but he's being played by Christopher Walken. And you know, I think that sounds great, but we don't know what he looks like, and I don't know why I'm kind of expecting like Sleepy Hollow vibes. I guess we'll see, but his daughter, Princess Irulan, is played by Florence Pugh. And the strange thing really is, her character isn't present throughout the book, like at all. At the beginning of every chapter, she says like a reading or an excerpt, and that's about it. So I'm very excited to see just a little bit of her background and for that to be explained explored and shown more. I'd love to see just kind of what's going on behind the scenes. But honestly, guys, it's just so exciting. There's so much to theorize about and to think about. And so I guess I'll just leave it at this. I Jones vibes in predicting that this movie is going to be the best sci-fi movie that we've seen in the last 20 years. You can call me crazy, but I just think that we might not be prepared for this. So you should get hyped. But yeah, that's about it for today. And so what are you most excited to see from Dune part two? Please let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments and spread the good vibes. Also, if you stuck with me this far, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that support and I'd also love to see you come back. So hit subscribe and if you're looking for more movie and television talk, I'll clip some at the end so you can keep on watching. But Dune Part 2 is almost here. And are you ready?